Well, teachers around the world are now faced with the difficult task of addressing the war between Israel and Hamas in the classroom. Students are in need of accurate, age-appropriate information, as well as emotional support. Judy Pace joins us now. She's an author and professor at the University of San Francisco School of Education. She also facilitates professional learning on teaching controversial issues with educators in the U.S. and around the world. Thanks for joining us. I think some of what we talk about will also help parents, too. I, I found myself, you know, asking my daughter, have you talked about it? She's 12, seventh grade. She said to me, no, that's the kind of stuff that adults talk about. <laughs> and I was like, okay. But I felt like I had to give her some guidelines about sensitivity and, you know, this is this this is very upsetting to a lot of people, yeah. you know? Um, so what's the first thing a teacher should do when talking to students about the war? I don't think there's one right answer. There are resources that are coming out from the New York Times, from Education Week, from Terra Info, a group out of Utrecht University in the Netherlands, from a Solutions Not Sides in the UK, and they offer different advice. So one way to go is to ask students what they already know and to ask them, how do you know what you know, to really check for media literacy and make sure that students are getting facts rather than misinformation and disinformation. Another way to go is to actually bring in an article and have students read the article and react to it. So it depends, it always, it depends on the context, it depends on the students, it depends on what the teacher is ready to do. So I always think of educators much the same way that I think about what we do for a living as journalists. In fact, when I thought about my career path, I had the competing interest of being an educator, a teacher, or a journalist because I sort of feel that we occupy that same space where we're human beings and we may have ties to the region, perhaps the people that we are teaching or uh, talking to have ties in the region, but we ourselves and teachers have to try to remain as objective as they can while also being fair and, and accurate. Um, how difficult is it to thread that needle? Because if you are someone who perhaps has ties to the region, perhaps the way you might approach the subject is different than someone who doesn't have ties to the region. And then you're not even talking about the kids in the classroom who may also have ties to the region. It's very difficult to thread that needle. Teachers really need to think about their own positionality and their own feelings about what's going on and do a lot of introspection. And they really need to think carefully about how they're going to approach their students. They need to know their students really well. I would say they need to find out how students are already thinking and feeling about the war. Um, and they need to figure out you know, what kind of stance they're gonna take. So I think humanitarian values come first. Uh, there was a good article by a teacher in New York in Chalkbeat um, talking about how students were asking her, are you on team Israeli or team Palestinian? Mm. And she said, I'm on team humanity. Nice. And then she had a discussion with her students where they shared what they had learned in previous classes about the conflict and got them to talk about their perspectives and their feelings. The students should be at the center. Um, you talked about media literacy, which sort of brings me to addressing hate speech and misinformation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just think like 10, 15 years ago, it would have probably been so... Um, simple for a teacher to address this sort of stuff. You know, you, we always talk about how we used to go back to the Encyclo Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica, Britannica right? Yeah. But you just go to a, a, a trusted source and say, here. But it just occurred to me in asking you this question about media literacy and misinformation that, you know, some of the misinformation may be coming from their own parents who truly believe uh, that, you know, the stuff they read on Reddit is yeah. the real deal. Right. So how do teachers address that? Well, there's also a lot of resources out there about teaching media literacy. Fortunately, uh, the Stanford History Education Group is a really great source that I use a lot. And, you know, I want to say that this kind of teaching should not be starting now. It mm. should happen on the first day of school. So it really begins with cultivating a supportive environment, um, being very thoughtful in knowing your students and your school community, including parents and their affiliations, their, their identities, um, choosing the issues and framing them in a way that's gonna open up inquiry and dialogue. I have a framework um, that is for teaching controversial issues and it's based on research that I did with teacher educators in Northern Ireland, in England, in the Midwestern US. 
And I think that it's really, really important for teachers to approach this in a holistic way, to be thinking through the eight elements of this framework um, as they address different dimensions of classroom life so that they're not going in blind. They've really thought through the context that they're working in and the principle that's embodied in that framework I call contained risk-taking. And it comes, like I said, from my research, um, I learned that teacher educators in places like Northern Ireland, which is still a divided society, still grappling with the legacy of violent conflict, approach these issues in a way that does promote student inquiry and discussion, but they also use strategies that contain the risks. Teachers are afraid of plunging into these controversial issues. And so they need to know some strategies that can help them prevent harm to themselves and to their students. We all know that teachers have been dealing with so much crisis. It's been one thing after another, the so pandemic, political attacks on education, and now this. Yeah. So, so they need a lot. So that, that leads to my last question, which is um, we, we talked about how teachers should be talking to students, but for themselves, for educators themselves, um, one of the most difficult things I would assume is, because we deal with it, is unconscious bias. You're, you know, I think, Amory, I told you that story about when I was, when I first moved to Europe as a young man, I, I met a young lady who was Polish and I asked her what it was like being a member of the Warsaw Pact, right? And when she was like, what are you talking about? Like, you're, 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 this is, your Vlad frame of this is the way Vlad flirts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your frame of reference, right. she explained to me, is completely biased towards the education that you received in the United States, which saw us, a Poland, who the war, uh, the war started because of protecting Poland, and now you see us as an enemy because we were forced to be aligned with the Soviet Union. In other words, there's things that you can learn and you can absorb, and you may be factually right, there was a Warsaw Pact, but the way you frame that discussion um, is, is sometimes wrong. And so how do teachers themselves deal with that? Well, one element of the framework is thinking through your own teacher stance. Like I said before, your positionality, the biases that you have, the assumptions that you have. And I think the best way to do that is in conversation with colleagues. Mm. So teachers should be going at this alone. They really need to support one another, to get support from school leaders, and also to get support from parents. So there needs to be a parent education piece as well. Mm. Judy Pace, this was such a great discussion. Thank you very, very much. It does so, sort of seem to me uh, that now more than ever, our teachers, teachers are not just here in the United States, around the world, are so important because there's so many things happening. This war yeah. in Ukraine, the war in the Middle East, what's happening here in this country, the United States. Um, and you're educating, I know it's a cliche, but you're educating the next generation. Yeah. And the more information that you can give them about ways that they can avoid the pitfalls that yeah. we are in now. They are better. under an incredible amount of pressure um, in a way they never have before. Thank you, Judy. Bottom line is working towards. Go ahead, finish your thought. Working towards peace and dialogue. We need to teach young people how to talk across differences, how to respect each other, how to hold up democratic values. Judy Pace, thank amen you very to much. that. Yes, that sounds great. That. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Judy.